first port of call is Norfolk, and a case that has them really worried. When the experts first met Paul Ashbury, his snoring could wake the dead. See what it's like. Loud, isn't it? And it was driving his partner Claire to her wit's end. I am really tired. I haven't had proper night's sleep ever since I can remember. But when Jason and Kirsty watched the night footage, they saw a more serious issue. It was what was happening between Paul's snores that really worried them. The snoring stopped, but in fact there was a pause in the breathing. And that went on a little bit longer than I'd be comfortable with. At the sleep house, the experts confirmed their worst fears. Paul has a condition called obstructive sleep apnea, which is potentially life-threatening when severe. There's quite a prolonged pause where it doesn't move at all. Mm -hmm. You've completely stopped breathing there. Right, OK. Sleep apnea leaves sufferers feeling so exhausted they can be a danger on the road. Paul could no longer drive. And as a van driver, that meant he couldn't work. So a major shock to my sister to think, you know, what am I going to do now? It's important that Paul's treatment starts as soon as possible. Kirsty has brought along sleep technician Roz to introduce Paul to his new bedtime companion, a contraption that looks more like a life support system than a sleep aid. Luckily, we've got a really good treatment, the CPAP machine. CPAP, short for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure, works by blowing a flow of air into the mouth and nose, and that prevents the airways getting blocked. But it does mean Paul will have to sleep with a mask strapped to his face. Right, that looks good. Medium looks good. What sometimes happens is for the first few nights, you wake up in the middle of the night thinking, oh, what's this? This feels a bit odd. So we need to know that you're using it for most of the night, and we usually want at least four or more hours. Can you just hold that in position? Good. What does it feel like? Quite comfortable. Different, isn't it? So how does it feel? Good. Happy? Mm -hmm. Whether Paul likes it or not, there's no escape. A chip in the machine will record exactly how long he wears the mask each night, and the data will be checked before he's given the all clear to drive again. I'll just take the mask off, release the clips. Paul's hopeful that just a few weeks with the mask will see him right. What is the long-term... Um, treatment, I mean, how long do I have this for? I think it's better to plan in your head for taking this, putting it into your routine and using it long term. Mm -hmm. So no, not just for a month. You need to plan to use this over the years. Okay. For many sufferers, the mask is for life. And now it's time to introduce his partner Claire to his new nightwear. Here we have the mask. It's like a Darth Vader mask. What are you? That's not really scary. It's daunting. It is really daunting to see something like that. So it's not going to hurt you, it's going to help you. So I don't mind. As long as you don't. <laughs> 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 mm. Don't the sleep mobile is parked up outside so Jason and Kirsty can keep a close eye on how Paul and Claire cope on his first night. Because, frankly, the mask's not the easiest of things to wear in bed. Or the most attractive. Oh, I hate that night, Darth Vader. Thank you. May the force be with you. <laughs> most people find the mask uncomfortable to begin with, and Paul's no exception. Every now and then, you just get someone who rips it straight off. And you know, if you're really claustrophobic, it's a bit tough. Claire kisses Paul goodnight, hoping for her first silent night in years. There is something magical about watching somebody fall asleep. Paul is now deep asleep, and there's not a snore to be heard. Here we 
even when you know about sleep apnea, I hate listening to the pauses. You're sitting there going, come on, breathe. The mask might look scary, but it seems to work. For the first time in years, silence reigns in Paul and Claire's bedroom. Until... But there's... The snoring could be a sign the mask isn't working. That is, if it's Paul, who's snoring? Well, we were a bit distracted because we heard snoring, but it's Claire. <laughs> We were just trying to work out where the snoring is coming from, but um, Paul definitely isn't guilty this time. But one night's successful sleep doesn't mean the treatment has worked. About 30% of people who are prescribed the mask eventually give up on the device. Paul's first night with a CPAP machine appears to have been a success, but he'll have to wear it a while longer to see if it's worked well enough to get his driving licence back. In the meantime, the Sleepmobile is on its way to Scunthorpe. But what about lorry driver Paul in Norfolk and his own instrument of torture? No, I'm OK. I'm get this comfortable, so... It doesn't look near it. He must wear this mask for at least four hours a night if he's to pass an assessment that will allow him to drive again. How do you feel today? Full of life. More refreshing. Full of beans. Go do the marathon. But as the days have gone on, it's not always been easy. We do now, just adjusting it. Right. Good night. God bless. By two o'clock in the morning, Paul's had enough. The machine will record this, and it could go against him at the assessment. With partner Claire at the wheel, it's time for Paul to discover if he's had enough hours with the mask to get his driving licence back. Come on then, tell me, how are you feeling? I'm feeling OK. A bit the old... Uh... The old tummy's going a bit, but, you know, keep your fingers crossed and hope for the best. That's all you can do at the end of the day, isn't it? Yeah. Kirsty's referred Paul to his local sleep consultant for his ongoing treatment. So, how have you been? Uh, I've been very well. Um, really alert. I haven't felt this much, you know, uh, awake, you know, for a long time. And I've been getting really low to sleep, and uh, I've just had I've just loads of energy now. I don't do with it. It's important to look at the data uh, because uh, we can't just take people's word for it. Of course. That's why we have the chip. Okay. And, and, never, and the chip never lies. No, the no, chip doesn't lie, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Started therapy on the 10th, and on the first night, you went for about 45 minutes, so I had a little break and then he went for a straight seven hour, four minute sleep. Paul's first two nights were good, but it's clear by night three, he was beginning to find the mask irritating. It's a bit more fragmented, um, probably adjusting the mask and getting yeah. used to things. So has Paul done enough to get back his license and his career? Looking at your compliance data, and also the fact that your fatigue score has dropped from 17 down to two, it would mean that you are compliant with therapy and you've responded very well, yeah. so you've had a positive outcome. Uh, from my point of view, you would be compliant to drive. This is just a brilliant result for you. It's lots of positive support, you're feeling better, you're keeping all your numbers right, and you're able to continue doing that. Jason and Kirsty's treatment has been a success. I'm feeling very relieved, excited as well, uh, that I can return back to work and do what I know I can do best, which is obviously driving. So, but I'm really pleased that results have gone my way. Better than to be expected, actually. Dream of